Yeah, Gotti, the Grim Reaper of Atlanta. They said this is Young Thug and YSL, top shooter. They said he really putting in work in the field. Now, I don't know who the fuck he is. So that's why we finna watch this motherfucking video right now to figure out who the fuck he is. This video is by Funna. Shout out motherfucking to, uh, shout out to Funna. And we finna get into it. You know we gotta like this video and shit. No, hey, how you doing? I'm your daddy. I got bodies on bodies. No, hey, how you doing? I'm your daddy. I got bodies on bodies. Start with a developing story out of Southwest Atlanta. That's where there were three shootings, all of them fatal, taking place within five miles and three hours of each other. The subject of today's video is a cold-blooded killer that's ready to put in work at a moment's notice. For those of you that keep up with hip-hop, you know that one of the largest takedowns in rap history just went down. The YSL Street Gang, made popular by rappers Young Thug and Gunna, was just taken down in an indictment by the state of Georgia using the RICO Act. All of the members of YSL are now facing decades in prison. Young Thug and Gunna may be the big names of YSL, but there was another member that was the most dangerous. Let's be real, bro. Gunna not a YSL for real, bro. I mean, he YSL the label. That's what he is. He ain't YSL the gang for shit show. Gunna ass ain't put in no work. His ass is snitching. Gunna is not no, not no gang member. The one putting in the most damage in the streets. The name of that member is Yak Gotti. And today, we're going to be telling his story. But before we get into the video, please be sure to like and subscribe. I already like this. Right. Yeah, Gotti's real name is Diamante Kendricks. In an interview with No Jumper, he stated that the yak in his name is short for maniac. He grew up in Atlanta and actually knew Young Thug at a very early age. They apparently lived in hoods right next to each other, and they met at just seven years old. Yak's uncle owned his own record label, so this made Yak interested in making his own music. With a record label owning uncle and a friend like Young Thug, Yak would have his foot in the door in the music industry. However, music wasn't his primary focus. Yak states that he jumped into the street life at just the age of 13 and seeing one of his close friends get shot made him grow up quickly. Unfortunately for him, all of the negative repercussions of the gangster lifestyle would follow him all throughout his life. While in the streets, Yak would still play sports. In fact, he had college scholarships to play football. I ain't gonna count to you. All them motherfuckers from down south and shit. All them rappers from down south, they ass be down there be good at sports. Raw as hell at sports and shit. Lots of the times, bro, them rappers be good as hell at sports. Just just them down south, them down south motherfuckers. They be good at football and shit a lot. All from Division One schools. However, one day, he got accused of rape and lost all of his college scholarships. Whoa. Yak was the most successful person and popular person at his high school, so he had a target on his back. One day, a new girl transferred to a school and took an interest in Yak. The girl asked Yak to be her boyfriend, but Yak declined her. After this, the girl began to tell everyone that Yak raped her. Yak was just 16 at the time. This is why you can't trust these bitches, bro. They be on petty shit. They will fuck up a nigga life, bro. That's why I own. You got to record these hoes, man. You got to have proof on these hoes on game. That's why you got to record hoes and have proof because these hoes be lying and they'll fuck up your life. I don't care. I'll be the real though that record you. You, you, you fucking with me? I'm going to record your ass just so I can show the police if your ass lie. The police went after him, but he went on the run. His mother made him turn himself in, and he had to spend time in an adult jail as just a 16-year-old. Yak would be released on bond, and nothing would ever result from the case. The case stayed pending for seven years, and Yak claims that the girl transferred schools and did the same thing to another boy. With all of his scholarships revoked and his sports dream crushed, Yak would fully dive into the street life full time. Just two years after beating the rape charge, Yak would be hit with his first murder charge. 
One day, Yak got into an argument with his mother, so his mother left the house and drove off. While she was driving, she honked a horn at a pedestrian that was walking across the street slowly. The pedestrian then cursed at Yak's mother, and the two of them got into a back-and-forth argument. As the argument ensued, the pedestrian pulled out a gun and opened fire, aiming at Yak's mother. Luckily, the shots missed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got to Got to slide. Yeah, the some some crash outs is understandable. That's a that that's a uh good reason to crash out. Someone shooting at your mama. And Yak's mother was able to get away unharmed. In an interview, Yak can be quoted as saying, "You shoot at my mom, you gotta go." Eventually, the person that shot at Yak's mom would be found dead. The police charge Yak Gotti with the, the murder as they believe that he had a clear motive. However, the police were never able to prove that he was the one that killed the man that shot at his mother, so Yak was released on bond after seven months and officially beat the case a year later. After beating the murder, Yak would have the reputation of someone that you shouldn't mess with. One day, while at a block party, Yak got into an altercation with a group of men. Yak Gotti is a Piru, and he was there dressed in red. The group of men were crips, and they walked up on him, leading to Yak clutching his gun. The tension arose once Yak's crew walked into the party. A truck then ran over a bottle in the middle of the street, causing people to think that a shot was let off. This caused the two groups to then get into a shootout with each other, and Yak was shot five times but survived. He was you see, this is why niggas don't need to have guns, bro. They be so quick to shoot, bro. That's how you know niggas be scary for real. If you quick to shoot, bro, you don't even know if it's a gunshot, you just shooting and shit. That's how you know I'm motherfucking scared. Because there's no way I'm going to shoot just because I hear a bottle go off, bro. That's an easy way to go to jail for no fucking reason. Shot four times in the leg and once in the arm. As the years continued, Yagadi would find himself wrapped up in a deadly gang war. Yak and his YSL crew would engage in a bloody beef with YFN that would terrorize the streets of Atlanta. It's rumored that the beef was started by a murder that Yak Gotti committed. On January 11, 2015, YFN Lucci's mentor, Big Nut, was shot and killed outside of an Atlanta barbershop. Two other people, including a 14-year-old, were also hit during the shooting. Big Nut's real name was Donovan Thomas, and he was rushed to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. This murder sent shockwaves throughout Atlanta and sparked the warfare between YSL and YFN. During the recent YSL indictment, Young Thug is believed to have been the one that rented the car used in the murder, and Yak Gotti is believed to be one of the gunmen responsible for the death of Big Nut. However, Yak wouldn't be charged for this murder until this year. He is now facing one murder charge and two counts of attempted murder for the shooting. Prior to the current indictment, Yak would serve some serious jail time. On October 1st, 2015, Yak and his passenger Duke from YSO fled a traffic stop and engaged in a short high-speed chase that ended after Yak ran a stop sign, lost control of the vehicle, and hit a guardrail. The Man. police apprehended the men after they attempted. You see, that's why motherfuckers shouldn't be doing them high speeds, boy. Driving fast as hell because you could lose your life over that shit. And your life is not worth that little bit of thrill unless you're a professional driver like me. Because, you know, I do this. To flee on foot. Upon searching the vehicle, the officers discovered a small amount of marijuana as well as a pistol and a semi-automatic rifle both loaded. Yeah. Later investigation revealed that both firearms were stolen. In subsequent interviews with police, Yak admitted that he owned the rifle and that he lent it to Duke, who planned to use it that night to retaliate against a rival gang who beat him up. Yak also told police that the pistol was his and described an unrelated incident shooting that firearm. Yak and Duke were both charged in state court. But while Yak was also charged in the instant case in federal court, Duke was not charged in federal court. Yak also. So this nigga Yak, he told? So he just submitted to what the fuck happened? Like, yeah, he was, I gave it to him. He was going to go kill someone. Ain't that snitching? Oh, I'm hearing this shit the wrong way. 
ultimately pled guilty to being a felon in possession of a firearm. He ended up serving five years in prison starting in 2015, and he was released in 2020. After being released from prison, Yagadi's music career began to take off. As his music career had began to take off, Yak and all of YSL have now been taken down by the police. He is now facing charges for the murder of Big Nut and various other conspiracy charges. Included in the indictment is the Instagram post that Yak made of him standing on the car of his rival wife and Lucci. The police are using this post to prove that Yak is a dangerous member of YSL and needs to stay behind. Come on, bro. Him standing on top of a car? He must be stopped? Bro, freedom niggas, man. They asses on bullshit. They just trying to find bullshit to lock these niggas up down. We got no real proof for real if they trying to use bullshit like this as evidence. Behind bars. Yeah, Gotti is currently locked up and facing decades in prison. Let me know what you guys think of the situation in the comment section of I told y'all that's what I think. That shit is some bullshit, bro. They had niggas let them niggas out, bro. They just trying to find shit to put on them niggas. Because they don't get out. They don't get out. Everything for real. I'm oh, good. But no, nah, man. I'm finna hop off this vibe, man. I gotta go do these videos now. My life is literally posting videos all fucking day. But I, I'll be smooth. We're going to be on live around the same time tomorrow.